This final chat reveals a spiritual being and his experiences as he travels the world. My growing up period was one of multiplicity. Mm -hmm. At a time when the concept of the word multi, American multi, that there is always a variety. A flower has so many things to it to make it into a flower. Not just the petals, not just the color, not just the aroma, not just the stalk, not just the plant, not just the earth. It is a composite of everything. Where do you start with a plant? At the root, Roots, at the or soil, the seed, or yeah. at the seed. It, it is, and by the time the flower stops being a flower, there is another flower to take its place. So there are so many other flowers in the same flower, one flower pot. If you take that thing, there is very early, again, our generation, you know, we were released from the confines of home. Growing up was, you suddenly realize that you're living in a complex world, especially if you come from Ipoh. You know. Yes, with all you know? the... There's so many forces going on, ethnics. and and then multiplicity was the way. You don't even think about it. You don't make a selection. It's not like you know check the box which you like to be. It's like you learn many languages. You can sing Hindustani songs. You can sing Malay songs. You can sing rock songs. You know, and but you you are you. It's only others who look at you and say. Wow, you can do that, or you can speak like American, or you cowboy, you know. They, they notice something <laughs> which is foreign and brought in. Yeah. I didn't look at it as foreign. My generation didn't look at it as foreign. I mean, we can play rock as well as any rock group in the world. I used to be MCs um, of emergent groups, you know, at that time. That's another part which we never talked about. Where I bring up the groups, they chose me to be that because I can speak in English and all that, and also go dabble into other languages and, and talk about the teenage hunters. Okay. And um, things like the things, the, there was a blend, everything was a blend. It was a flower garden, for God's sake, not a pot of plant. <laughs> and that was my world. And, of course, with time, there's always hybridization, you know, that one merges into another, and then when you serve a meal, you have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. When you speak, you, you know, you chuck up la yusuke, and then, you know, you choose a nice choice word. Say <laughs> you know, dehe, or pora, my randi. All this comes out in one sentence, in one concept, for one question, your answer is a blend of various inputs in you. Ah. Others notice it as, this is weird. And I say, why? It's natural, that's what I hear, what I do, these are my friends, and my friend's mother can't speak anything else except in Chinese. So Absolutely, you, la. So what I'm saying is, you know, you, you became an actor, or you're known as an actor, and all the composites of your being an actor is because we're Malaysians, you know, we have, yeah. we've got so many, everything goes into it. So, but still... I think I need to tell the government, uh, before we, <laughs> tell the government, uh, you're looking for a sort of a classic, the model Malaysian yes. to be. Uh, yes. Go look at people in my generation, because we fought that war. We lived that, that, that life. We went that journey. Not only that, I think it's, it's that if you want, you want to see that journey, it's in, it's in all your generation first of how you Our generation, you know, I include I didn't everybody who came through the, the, the 60s the, and the, 70s. The, the Japanese, but the, no, the war. The and 60s, then, 70s, post Merdeka. Oh, 60s, I'm still in school. You know, I the symbolic thing is, Merdeka 1957, no? The country got its license, so to speak. Yeah, la. Okay? I got my IC. I was 12 years old. First time a piece of paper which says that, you know, it was in English actually. <laughs> but, uh, so it was like, you're now a citizen of uh, the Federation of, 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 Malaya. of Malaya. You know? Whoa. Before the plastic thing, it was just 
a sort a of piece of paper. It's a piece of paper <laughs> about this size, which you fold, oh. and then, and it's a carbon copy, you know. You should roll this because nobody knows these, you know. Okay. It's, it's a carbon copy, and um, so you fold it, and you're supposed to be carrying it with you all the way, but inevitably, because you put it into your pocket or whatever. It gets wears off. Wear, wear and wear tear, tear and moisture. And then after a while, you open up all the carbon writing inside there had faded and merged into the, you know, the, 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 the ink and stuff. The ink yeah. and all that. So it's like indescribable. That's why they brought the laminated one up. Yeah. Because everybody had that problem. <laughs> so I come from that generation. But the point I'm trying to make is that mm. when the country got its independence, and was free, I got my IC. My, those born in that year got the IC. And so the path of Malaysia, Malaya and Malaysia, and the path of a growing adolescent into adulthood merged at the same time. So I saw every prime minister, I saw everything which was happening in the name of the country and in my name, you know, as the citizen of this country and I became politically very awake. So when it came to that, do something which represents Malaysia, which was asked of me with the Commonwealth, I knew exactly what to do. Mm. It's great. All these various people we talked about, Mandela, you know, Martin Luther King, Aung San Suu Kyi, all these people had this as the theme. We are fighting for the soul of a nation to be born. Mm. And I'm not comparing I mean, myself with that. them, but, but I could understand yeah. what they were saying. Yeah. And in a smaller way, that's mm. what our generation was doing. And now we are trying to reinvent the wheel, come up with what? Keluarga Malaysia ni. Hello. Sudah lah. We've already got that a long time ago. Why are you going to masak the same old rice all over again? True. Rice can only be cooked once. The next time you do it, it's fried rice. <laughs> so, we are being fried, in a sense. <laughs> You're very right. Yeah. I wish I had a platform where I could address a larger crowd of people, especially decision makers, and say, Ade ade di sumon ye. Saya abang. Saya berumur ni. And I have seen all this. And I can speak more languages than you. So, but under your definition, I am not Malaysian enough. What's wrong with me? I'm a boy in order to become, you know, whatever. So, there's a very strong political side to me. And um, I've actually been tipped off by people higher up to say, you got to watch it, Manu. You're on file. But you have not um, shown that in your theatre works as some other people have in this country. Was that why? I would go for the underexpressed areas mm. of women's rights, yeah. yes. citizens' rights, the, Rather than the in down the face. undertrodden. Yeah, down, I, I can, but I have in my writings, I, I did political science as one of my uh, minors while I was in the university. And the political scientists in me went on to other forms where I don't want to mention names of publications, but you know I used to write the editorials of the biggest newspapers around here, and that's where some of my feelings, my my reasonings, and all that got to. And of course, I was always held up uh, to Nordin Sophie's office to say, "I don't think this will pass master." I said, if not, it doesn't make sense. You know, we have got only about 30 minutes before the, the, the printers roll. So, what do you want me to change? I can change one word, but I'm not going to change the concept. So, mm. you, you stand up for your rights. Uh, after all, how many well, people read the editorial law? You know. But the point is, yes, in the choice of what I do, mm. there is a meaning and reason why I'm doing it. Yeah. And at that time, when I was doing it in the 60s and 70s, the feminist movement was needed all the help it could get. And um, to also to signal to all the women that not all men are against you, you know. 
because we all are born of mothers ourselves. So I was so bored. I was not working at that time, it was one of my breaks from Korea. I went to Europe with my crutches and threw them away, I just kept them in the back. And I recovered. Where did I go? Santorini. Where? Santorini. Oh, really? Greece. Yes. Santorini. Wow. And it's all slopes. Yes. <laughs> Lake. Yeah. You know? That's when I started to become a fan of blown off craters and I visited about four or five blown off craters all over the world. That's part of my trips. Huge Troubles. craters, you know. Troubles. And then, because you know geology and geography and all that, and then you could see the whole thing happening in front of your eyes. And then there it is. Arizona, Santorin, Philippines, Toba, most recently. My last travel trip was to Lake Toba just to go and see. I haven't been to the one blast fella which had the biggest impact in world climate. And I could understand that also given my background. And it's just next door, 20 minute flight. And I still haven't gone. I said, it's so close by, I can go there any time. But show me a blown off volcano and there is one which is going on in Java. Yeah, well, I'm right waiting now, for yeah. it to subside. Maybe in 10, day, uh, 10 years time can go. <laughs> because the whole place is still unstable. There's so much going on in life, man. I, I, I don't think I've had an idle week. Maybe an idle day or two, but there is always so much going on. Either people to people, value-based, non-value-based, urban, rural, the races. I won't use the word races. Just linguistic groups. We're all one race, the human race. Mid, late 70s. I was the top of an organization and um, people considered me, I didn't realize this, but considered me, this fellow is still not married yet, you know, that, that type of thing. So the mummies of the world would, would, will have, if you match that, that fellow's daughter and this type of things. So you get invited to people's homes. After a while, you get the drift that they're trying to like, oh, this is my daughter, or something like that. Oh my God, I fell into the trap again. I, I, I'm doing, I've seen enough Tamil movies to know that this type of things really actually happen. Okay, never mind. So there I was, and this American lady who happened to be the wife of the uh, Malaysian, um, American Peace Corps director, the Peace Corps director and my rank were about the yeah, same. So. Yeah. And um, she would tell others, is it, it's the most eligible bachelor in town, or something to the effect. I mean, hello, I'm in my late 20s, early, not yet even early 30s, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I've done all these things. Yes, 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 oh, okay. But I, I'm, I'm not anywhere near trying to get some kind of permanent relationship with anyone. Years later, she came back for a visit to Malaysia. Did you finally get married or not? <laughs> I said, no. She changed her expression. She ex actually wanted to know who I would marry. And then, after that pause, I was talking to someone else and, and I said, oh, come on. I got you figured. I thought you had had me figured a long time ago. No. Remember, she has stayed and speaks Tamil and she, she's, mm. she knows the Indian bit. Like me knowing the American bit, you know, that way. I think you have done all the things you needed to do in all your previous lives, mm. being a householder and all those kind mm. of things. And this one is a free ride for you. This is, this is what you gain from all having that. made to suffer all those other things. Then you reach 
this is your nirvana. You can do and be what you want. Of good health, good wealth, good talent, good, good whatever. Do you know that I've actually met the Dalai Lama? Hmm. When? He was in India, actually. And he was visiting that, that particular headquarters where we were having a seminar and all that. And we were told, the Dalai Lama is in town. The Dalai Lama may even visit this place. And we were told to be like in good behavior and you know, and so on. And then he was going to come down the steps and we all came out to line up to, to see him. He just, like that. He saw me, he, he took two steps towards me and he thought that I was some kind of venerated person because I looked exactly like this, full bearded. Mm -hmm. And of course, instinctively, I did that. He smiled and he had such... Sabi, it's very hard not to be emotional at that kind of a moment when... Yeah, it's a Dalai Lama. He's, yeah. he's like, he is taking up his hands to... Mm. <laughs> Ding! Nothing can beat that. Yeah. Not Queen Elizabeth. Absolutely. Not even our Agong, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the spiritual master, yeah. the embodiment of the highest attainment. Yeah. And he took up his... I've never mentioned this to anyone except to you now. That's why I don't want it to be printed. It's a personal thing. And you, you, you prompted me by asking, what are you going to be next? I said, yeah. I don't know. Maybe take... Dalai's place. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. You need to be about three years old before they identify you. So um, that yeah, it's just not um, a spatial, you know, mm. journeys that I've done. Um, I, I've also story. become a Sahara. I mean, a, a desert. I think I mentioned that yesterday. Did I mention deserts? Yes. Yeah, okay. yes, yes. I'm some kind of a desert specialist. Only the, the South American desert, Atacama, that I haven't been to. And, mm. But I'm also an ice and snow specialist too. So, mm. I haven't revealed all this and you've made me do it, but I'm just scared at the moment how much of this is actually going to be in print or what? No, we'll, we'll uh, these are all very we'll special private moments. Yeah, we'll see. you'll see it before we, okay. it goes out. My job is clearly okay. just to kind of put it together. <laughs> you will see. And I've never cried in front of camera. Eh? Never? Wa? I mean, as Manu. Oh. Oh dear, somebody said, I've never cried in front of camera. I cannot believe why now. No, it's... No way. This is that, that, that... I mean, I can actually see him in front. It's a small size. Oh, is Very he? humble. I know, he's... It's I always same thought he was very tall. He's about, about this height. Oh, really? Yeah. And he looks up to do this to me, and it was like... Oh, uh -huh. eh. <laughs> feeling, you know? Yeah. That, that kind of a feeling. I bet you didn't know this, but there's more to come in the next episodes.